Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I decided to come to the place that many of you already know, the Rose Garden here in Szczecin, because the roses are out and it's absolutely stunning. So this will be a good balance for the topics that I have for you today. The name of this rose is Morning Sun. Look how gorgeous, guys. How beautiful. So as I will be walking along, those beautiful flowers will be showing you some of them. So those of you who appreciate the beauty of the nature, I hope you'll be okay with this. Guys, uh, first and foremost, yesterday I had an amazing live stream with the one and only, as I always say, Andrei Martianov who, you know, is one of my absolutely favorite guests. Those of you who have not seen it yet, please make sure to check it out. Sorry, my eyes are all over because they are so pretty. Those roses are gorgeous. Uh, we covered a lot of topics and the main topic that was in the beginning of the live stream was, of course, about the Russian Navy, actually the four ships, warships that are heading to Cuba and will be docked at the, at the port of Havana, the capital of Cuba, from the 12th of June. So what we have today, guys? I think the 10th. So in two days from now, until the 17th. 17th is Monday. I will be docked there. So Andrei addressed those uh, ships. And of course, we covered a lot of other topics about the current events in Russia, Ukraine, European Union. So make sure to check it out. And what I have for you today is one article from businessinsider.pl and I want to give you my personal take on how the situation at the border between Poland and Belarus and the recent events that took place there. There were two events. The first one was that has not been reported, even though the Ministry of National Defense knew about it. Let me think which way is, I think this is a better way for you to have the view. Um, they haven't reported about it, even though they knew that three soldiers have been arrested. And like I told you in one of my latest articles, uh, sorry, videos, not articles, they have been arrested and they have not been uh, provided a lawyer so other soldiers had to gather the funds, the money to help them out. This was uh, not reported officially to the public. And then we had, of course, the tragic death of 21 year old Mateusz, who was stabbed at the border with a poisoned knife, apparently. And I have fantastic, I mean, really fantastic comment from one of you about organ harvesting. So stay all the way to the end of this video. So I give you this, uh, this comment. But let's go into my take on how they are using this situation to create something that will be a form of, I would say a buffer zone, but not that kind of buffer zone that most of us are thinking about as far as, you know, the land that has been destroyed after the nuclear attack, talking about a different buffer zone. And this buffer zone might go not just uh, through Poland, I think this will actually go through other countries, other Baltic countries. It's not quite in this article, but it's just my personal opinion. So let me read you what just took place from businessinsider.pl. The head of the Ministry of National Defense announces changes in regulations the biggest fight since World War II. That's how they are approaching this. Władysław kosiniak kamysz by now you know who he is, he's the Minister of National Defense of Poland. Uh, he's a doctor. Yeah, the one who has his backpack ready just in case if the bleep will hit the fan. So Władysław kosiniak kamysz the head of the Ministry of National Defense, presented on Tuesday the actions taken by his ministry to protect the eastern border. 
This is the biggest fight that the Polish state has been fighting since World War II, he said. So I wonder why they are so dramatic, huh? He added that it was a fight for the future of the country. The planned activities of the Minister of National Defense include the safe Podlasie. Podlasie is the region in which that soldier was, uh, was killed. The safe Podlasie operation and changes in the law regarding the use of weapons by soldiers. The head of the Minister of National Defense announced the introduction of, this is the name of this project, state between war and peace into the legal system for the first time. At the beginning of the conference, the head of the Minister of National Defense also announced that Poland would prosecute a criminal who stabbed a Polish soldier. I still don't know, I still don't know if Belarus was able to, to get this person, to extradite this person. So how they will prosecute, I don't know. I'm just reading you this article. The Republic of Poland will do everything and will not rest until the bandit who brutally attacked Polish soldier uh, with fatal results is caught. All state services are involved in this process, said Władysław kosiniak kamysz Then he went on to present the activities of the Minister of National Defense in the context of border protection. He started with the GEAR campaign, which has been going on since the beginning of the year and concerns equipping soldiers. Isn't it amazing how much money they spent on all those F-16s, tanks, Abram tanks, etc., all those deals, but they cannot equip those soldiers, right? Isn't it? Because maybe you will not be making that much money if you are buying the equipment for the soldiers. It's a very small percentage of business for you. I think it's better to buy F-16 or other military uh, equipment, right? Just faster. You make money faster and bigger, higher numbers. My thoughts only. As a second issue, he mentioned the equipment, I'm not sure how you pronounce, Wolverines armed personal carriers that was sent to the border. He also added that the Minister of National Defense is preparing the operation called Safe Podlasie. It will come into force on August 1st. So guys, Safe Podlasie. I wonder what this will be from August 1st. Something to expect. The Chief of the General Staff of the Polish Armed Forces, General Wiesław Kukuła, clarified that this is in fact a combination of two other operations which is to improve their command. The first of the, the word I never heard of, aforementioned operation is R-E-N-G-A-W, which we launched at the time when the Wagner Group troops were transferred to Belarus. See, like that was the biggest threat at the time for Poland, the Wagner Group. I don't know, many of you probably forgot already about this. Oh, the second is Operation Griff, which is a support for the border guard. The, operations, the operation is expected to last about three years. During this time, the border is to be strengthened, which will allow military forces to be freed up. Hmm. I don't quite understand what they mean by this. During this time, the border is to be strengthened, which will allow military forces to be freed up. What do you think? A state between war and peace. So this is the next part of this article. A large part of the conference was devoted by the head of the Ministry of National Defense to the issue of the rules for the use of weapons by soldiers and the activities of the military police. So here they are addressing this why the soldier was not allowed to use the weapons and why those three soldiers have been arrested by the military police. This year alone, soldiers and officers used weapons 1.3 thousand times 
In May alone, there were 770 cases the head of the Minister of National Defense informed. He added that in the whole of last year, so 2023, the weapon was used only 320 times. Władysław kosiniak kamysz emphasized that these data prove that soldiers are not afraid to use it, but he announced changes also in the penal code, which are to make uniformed officers even feel even more confident and not be afraid of consequences. I mean, to be honest, I, I'm not an expert, of course, but don't you think if he would be allowed that 21-year-old Mateusz, if he will not feel afraid to use that weapon to protect his life himself, he would do it. So what stopped that soldier from doing this, right? A simple question, what stopped it? If he would be allowed to do it. So there has to be some pressure for those soldiers not to use the weapons, not to use those weapons even in order to protect not just the border, I mean, that's why he's there, but his life, his own life. The legitimacy of the use of handcuffs by officers of the military police against soldiers is also to be clarified. Okay, there is a big group coming, so I might have to remove myself. In the case of the of detention of a soldier performing active military service, soldiers of the military police in the course of performing the, their duties are additionally obliged to respect the dignity and honor of the soldier and military service, including the uniform of a soldier of the Polish army, using detention during the performance of official activities or tasks by the soldier as a last resort, unless there is a need to detain the soldier in the act, said Kosiniak Kamysz. He added that he was quoting the whole new article because he knew how much emotion this issue evokes. The law is to be adopted to the situation of hybrid war. Uh, that's what he said. And he announced the introduction of the state between war and peace into the legal system for the first time. Since the beginning of the week, let me make sure move myself. Since the beginning of the week, security topics have become the main point of interest for the government. On Monday, an off-site meeting of the Council of Ministers was held in Białystok, where the topics of the meeting were the East Shield, you know, this is what Tusk, the new slash old Prime Minister of Poland, Donald Tusk, mentioned in Kraków several weeks ago, and the buffer zone at the border. The creation of the buffer zone is a reaction to the uh, intensifying attempts to force the wall on the border and allow migrants from Belarus to enter Poland. One of such attempts ended tragically. In the early morning of May 28, this is describing the situation where the soldier was attacked and he died. Um, let's see, there is more here. Yeah, anyway, so, Tusk also said, before I end this article, Tusk also said that in the recent weeks, 10 people directly involved in acts of sabotage and sabotage in Poland have been arrested. We have reasons to believe that these are not the last events of this type. Of course they are not, okay, we know this, said Prime Minister Donald Tusk during a meeting with Vovoids, so those uh, who represent Vovoidship. Now, my personal opinion is they are uh, having fantastic opportunity to use this situation at the border between Poland and Belarus to create this buffer zone. And what this buffer zone will be used for, I think they will bring more soldiers that will be stationed there, not just Polish soldiers. And then we see how this goes, because this is actually ideal scenario, like you're creating this perfect spot for the things to escalate. And it will end tragically. We all know this. They still believe that they can do something, right? All they can do is to sacrifice lives of young people because they like 
they like these blood rituals, that's what they like. And on this note, I have to read you this comment because it's not an easy one, but it's very important and informative. It's about uh, organ harvesting. The video, latest solo video that I have posted on Sunday, in which I was reading you about how tragic it is in Ukraine for those young men trying to escape the conscription in what ways they are trying to do it. I also mentioned that as this is circulating still around internet in Poland, on internet in Poland, that young soldier Mateusz was, his brain was kept alive to not to be uh, announced, announced his death in order not to complicate the election process for the EU parliament. And I absolutely think this is very, very, very true. I don't have facts, but I tend to believe that's true. And this is the comment from Luisa Lee. When they want to harvest organs, they keep you on life support to ensure oxygen supply to end waste to and waste disposal from the organs. When they are harvesting the organs, they then give you muscle relaxants to make sure they can cut into the body as without them the body will tense. Sometimes this is so that a scalpel cannot cut. I have heard reports of people waking up and sitting up on the table after their organs had been removed, had been already removed. Quite a few medical people have left this field of medicine because of this. This is horrifying, guys, don't you think? I mean, some of you probably know a lot about this because there is a lot of you who are watching with a lot of experience in medical field. Maybe you can testify that this information is true because this will all make sense. And this is, I don't know if this is now number one or still number two. I think it's number one, the most profitable business in the world, human trafficking, mainly for organ harvesting and the experiments on humans, actually why they are still being alive. No joke. That's all I have for you today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching the video. The article will be down below in the description box. Uh, and also one more time, I will keep on asking you to join me on Locals. And if you choose to support my work, since I don't have any sponsorships, that will also mean a lot to me. You can become the supporter there. You can become the supporter, the member of this channel by clicking, clicking this join button that is right underneath the video. Uh, also, you have my PayPal, buy me a coffee and the fundraiser for my place, you know, where in the art country. Yes, this is still my, this is still my dream and my goal to accomplish. And follow me on Instagram as well. With this being said, lots of love. And remember, we are the leading edge and we are saving humanity. And those roses are just breathtaking. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow in another video.